Hello, my brothers and sisters in Christ all over the world, uh, wherever you are, I hope you're enjoying your time and you're enjoying good health. Today is Tuesday, 15th of November, 2022, and we decided to come together live and tell you a bit of our story. And just looking at the camera, we just look like a little bit lopsided. And, and she's she's not taller than me, by the way. <laughs> it's, it's the stool she's sitting on. That's as low as it gets, and mine is as high as it gets. And if I sat on that, I'll look like a giant. So uh, we just did it this way anyway. That's that, that's the only two uh, computer chairs we have. <laughs> um, uh, we want to uh, tell you a bit of our story. Uh, we have lots of stories to tell you, lots of um, testimonies, in fact. But we decided to tell you this because uh, it is similar to what we're going through right now. Again, it's kind of a repeat of history for us. And um, we want to encourage the body of Christ to tell them that they have to walk by faith and not by sight. And that's exactly what we did back in 2010. Now I have to put you in the picture first and uh, what we were doing at the time. 2010, uh, if you remember, it was a global recession or the beginning of the recession at least. And uh, lots of people had been laid off Lots of people had lost their jobs and lots of people had lost their homes. And thankfully, I had a very good job. I was lecturing at a college not very far from us, uh, where we live right now, about 15 minutes drive. Um, and um, I uh, had just started <coughs> I had just started uh, studying uh, for my master's degree uh, in uh, robotic and um, in September 2010 uh, one morning I got up and I had this urge this um, force within me telling me that we had to drop everything and go to America. Now, if, and, and there, there was no dream or anything, it was just like sudden, um, I don't know how to um, call it, what to call it, uh, sudden inspiration, maybe force compelling me uh, to basically drop everything leave everything and go to America um, if this came from uh, Stacy um, I would have my, my first uh, reaction would be well, well you would have said that you would have wanted that because you're American and your family are there and you would want to go uh, near your family uh, and uh, it, it was a definite uh, message from God for me because I knew um, I would never want that I, that wasn't my personal desire and uh, and I doubted very much it would be Satan telling me that because there, there, there was no um, there was nothing to go against the will of God or, or do anything wrong or have any kind of evil intention uh, so uh, one of the justifications or reasons I had was that I wanted her and us all of us basically or well, at the time we, we didn't have any kids we were just us and uh, we had just been married about a couple of years and, and, and I wanted us to get nearer to her family I wanted her to be nearer her family uh, although God told me, but I, I was thinking maybe that's one of the reasons. 
But I didn't know why. I didn't know why we had to go there. But I, I knew I had to. And uh, when I told her, she was shocked and, and she, she didn't want to believe that it's coming even from me because I, I didn't even have any kind, any kind of interest. Yeah, I was really shocked because my husband never had any desire to visit America when he was single or go there and all of his colleagues were going there, oh, have you been to Florida? Have you been to Las Vegas? Have you been here? And my husband was just totally uninterested in <laughs> that kind of place. So from him coming to say to me, yeah, let's go to America and live there, I was really shocked. It was very shocking and I had never um, even thought that we would go there because if you're new to this channel my husband is British and I'm American and we live in the UK so that was um, yeah it was something I never thought I would hear coming out of his lips so um, the decision was in the end to go and uh, we, we both agreed and uh, the next thing for me was to uh, apply for a green card to go to America because uh, of course we could just go uh, and I could just get a visitor's visa but uh, I wouldn't be able to stay long term and uh, apply for jobs and those kind of things so I applied for a US green card um, and before anything I put also at the same time I put in my resignation uh, at my workplace now that meant my study uh, at the university would be abruptly, abruptly uh, cut off and uh, they told me I would have to pay the tuition fee that the, the college where I was working had actually paid for me uh, because they were basically supporting me to do that and so I would have to do that although in the end they dropped that and I didn't have to pay it which is on its own another miracle another testimony but uh, we don't want to get into details of everything just want to tell you the whole gist of the whole picture and, and give you an overall view of what's happened and so uh, uh, putting my resignation everybody was asking me where are you going have you got a better job have you got another job lined up and things like that and I was saying no I haven't got anything and, I, and we are we are going to America um, have you got your green card? No. So why are you doing this? Why don't you just wait for the green card to come? That could take years sometimes. That could take at least months. You know, why don't you just wait for that? Uh, and in the meantime, you know, work. Uh, so they were basically giving me advice and, and I was thinking, you know, I, I, I have to do it the way I feel like I have to do it. And, and so I did that that way. Uh, I dropped the job. And in fact, uh, usually, normally, I would have to give, uh, I think it was a month notice, uh, but I asked them to release me as soon as possible. And so um, at the end of that month, uh, they let me go, uh, which was like a few, a couple of weeks after that, one or two weeks after I put in my resignation, I, I was able to actually leave uh, my workplace. And then, um, in the meantime, while we were still waiting for the green card to appear, which was an unended, unforeseen uh, future, we, we didn't know how long the piece of string was, so we had to wait. And um, uh, in that, in that uh, period, my parents came here and visited us and we told them the story and they, they even helped us at the time this house needed some renovation and we we were in the middle of renovating when i did that uh, when i put the resignation in so it wasn't actually complete so we uh, with the help of my parents managed to finish off the remaining work here and completed the renovation and uh, remember now i don't have any income my income is uh, gone, uh, or our income. We, we, there was only me working and uh, she was working at home, so we didn't have anything else. Um, we didn't have much saving, but what we had, we split half, 
half and we transferred half of that to America to our um, bank and kept some here to to be basically uh, strictly limited uh, to our budget so we won't dip in to the money that we we will have in America because we were think we were thinking we have to go there and we have to stay for a while before I can even possibly get a job there uh, and, and like I said we didn't know how long this process would take to just even get the um, green card and be able to move and have the, the flight tickets and all the rest of it uh, so after everything was split and we considered everything uh, you know calculated everything uh, we managed to basically put uh, I think it was about 13 or 14 thousand dollars in our American bank and and that was everything um, over there and here we had enough money just just more or less the same amount to just get by and finish the renovation and pay our bills and everything the mortgage that was going on and still going on and um, and so uh, wait till the, uh, the, the the application is successful the green card uh, is granted and then we fly we buy tickets um, the green card uh, came within three months and everybody was telling us and everybody that we knew that they had applied on the, the same on the same um, grounds they um, had to wait at least two years I think well, one person said they had to wait yeah. two, two okay. years and um, but mine came in three months uh, after we had the interview at the embassy in, in London and uh, everything was set for us to go and so we got the tickets um, and we went I think it was in uh, April yeah and we had just April. managed to finish renovating this house to where it was like uh, in a livable situation before we left so that was another miracle right as we finished that everything else fell into place and it was like from beginning to end everything was falling into place like down to the last second yeah and you know we were tiling the floors here and uh, it was like I knew as soon as I laid it last tile uh, we will have a breakthrough you know we will be able to move on from that point and and that's exactly what happened you know we put the last tile it just reminded me of Noah's Ark as the door closed the flooding started and so I, I believe in uh, in that kind of um, kind of cycle if you like that that you have to accomplish something before you are moved on you have to complete where you are before you can move before God can move you on to the next level uh, whatever that may be even if it means finishing the tiling of the floor and, and grouting it so that that got finished and um, we, uh, we bought tickets we flew to America to Idaho mm -hmm. uh, where her parents are and uh, we talked to them previous previous to that that this is now 2011 in 2010 before we did this uh, we had a visit to America and we went there and talked to her parents and we said we want to do this uh, will you be okay for us to you know to accommodate us for a while until we find our feet here and you know uh, I get a job or something like that and then, then we can move on and um, you know uh, and, and one of the things I said to her mom was that I believe in the end blood is thicker than water so I, I believe that uh, us being closer to you is better than you know staying where we don't have uh, a close family member you know if you like so anyway um, they they agreed in the end and um, 
I don't know, I didn't want to say this, but I, I, I think I have to say this because her parents uh, didn't or wouldn't um, <clears throat> um, initially approve of our marriage to begin with. Um, for their own reasons, and we still don't know why. Uh, the, 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 the real reason, we still don't know, we are confused about that. But um, um, they agreed that we would go there and they would accommodate us. Uh, they have enough room there and we could stay there for a while. Now, since that time till the time that we were able to go is about um, nine months, mm -hmm. eight, nine months, and in the beginning of summer or late spring, uh, we managed to actually go there and, and uh, stay with them. Then what happened? <laughs> How do you want to? I don't know. We were we were well, we were looking for jobs. Um, my husband was looking for a job the whole time we were staying with them, and we were getting um, interviews, but we weren't actually getting the job. So, and he was uh, doing a lot of organizing files and applying. I don't know how many jobs we applied for. Loads, and we were willing to go anywhere in the country. We weren't just wanting to stay in Idaho. But we wanted to still stay in the same country so we could come back and keep visiting. Um, and then um, it just wasn't working well living with my parents. There was a lot of friction and tension in the air and it just was not good for our relationship um, together and with uh, my parents. So we were basically willing to go anywhere so we looked at what we had in the bank and we were looking to just buy a house and get ourselves kind of out of their house into another house and then kind of go from there and we felt that's what God wanted us to do and we didn't know how that was going to be possible because we didn't have very much money in our bank account certainly not enough that we thought we could ever buy a house with yeah so when uh, when I asked her father if he could find us um, some somewhere um, and he found out how much money I had he just laughed off you know the, the, the whole idea and uh, he said unless somebody wants to give away his house and uh, although uh, we are now in the middle of the recession and the house prices had crashed the housing market had crashed then especially in America and uh, so uh, the, the, the pressure, the, the strain, uh, the, the relationship being strained and all that uh, got worse and worse. Um, their uh, reasoning or their argument was that we weren't socializing with them, but we were too busy, first of all. Uh, but they didn't know what we were doing because, uh, because I was applying for jobs and they were expecting me to just say okay i applied for this job i applied for that job and this didn't work that didn't work and for me that's just all negative message i don't want that i want to come up and say i applied for this job a month ago and i, and I got this job now uh, after interviews uh, that was my idea but their idea was like you have to tell us everything and uh, that's fine if you are telling me everything as well but you're not telling me everything and you're expecting me to tell you everything so anyway, that's besides the point. Uh, and, and also uh, that um, the argument that we weren't helping them, uh, but we did help them every day in their daily chore. My wife was helping them. I my, myself was doing things I'd never done for myself or for my own parents uh, and did for them. Uh, but of course, uh, it must have not counted as help or anything to them. Um, we're not trying to um, uh, wash our dirty linen in public here and, and tell you about all our private uh, family affairs, but we want to put you in the right picture because if I just give you the whole thing, just think well, what's, what's happened to this, what's happened, there will be lots of uh, black holes, if you like, uh, lots of unknowns. Uh, and, and we want you to get to know us better. Uh, 
there is there is a lot of people who are just watching uh, coming on this channel and watching and going disappearing probably not coming back again but there is uh, quite a lot of people who are interested who want to know us more and uh, we know uh, most of them if not all of them by their ID names uh, and and we read all the comments as I've said before we might or might not answer all the comments but we read all of them uh, and so we want you to not only get to know us but see how we moved by faith so we got to the point that we had to move from there and um, it, it, it wasn't a rental uh, place we weren't renting but we were helping them and we weren't holidaying either we weren't staying there like a holiday place and and just enjoying our life we were buying our own food and we were basically independent so um, we weren't uh, abusing the, the the family or their situation or our own uh, position and in fact i was very mindful of that not to you know cross the line but anyway um uh, we got to the point that had that came one day while I was actually working with him and helping him uh, he said to me so how long do you want to uh, stay here and um, I said well you know I don't know how long is a piece of string I don't know how long it will take for me to get a job and he said well you applied for uh, quite a few and you didn't get any uh, I said okay give me two weeks I'll be out here I think I think I said two weeks or one yeah. week no, two weeks. Ago. Two weeks. I think I said two weeks. I'll be out of here, and then uh, he felt sorry, but uh, he, he it was too late. And when I say something, I'll just do it, no matter what happens to me or, or the consequences. I don't I don't care about that anymore. And once it passed, it's passed. And so two weeks. Within that two weeks, and uh, we forgot about you know finding a job. We just thought we have to get out of here, and uh, we looked for a home and we didn't want to rent a place because if you rent a place uh, as soon as you rented a place uh, it would take only a few months before our money would be finished and and so we didn't know what to do uh, we were looking at houses and there were a lot of houses repossessed houses uh, all around the country uh, unfortunately we couldn't find many in in Idaho we did find some but uh, they were all either completely wrecked and it wasn't livable at all uh, and so we didn't even want them and, and for me uh, with the way I've been brought up and the, the houses I've seen uh, having a wooden house is like being living in three three little pigs story you know everything in the UK is brick wooden yeah. houses are like taboo yeah, they well, just don't do those. Yeah, they're, they're not taboo, but they're, they're like lodges. They call them lodges. And, yeah, and, and they're just, like little holiday homes. And yeah, you can stay in them, you know, and you're not actually allowed to stay there for 12 months a year. So yeah. anyway, it's just like uh, the pig that l built his house out of straws. You know, anyway, I'm not trying to... Uh, uh, it's just the point, you know, that I didn't like... Um, we didn't have money, but we expected a brick house as well. And, and on top of that, we, we didn't have income, so we, I was looking at um, uh, brick houses uh, that are actually uh, duplex. So we could have one side, one flat rented out and, and have an income to start with at least, and then live on the other side. And um, sure enough, we found one, uh, and guess where? In Atlanta. Atlanta Georgia and um, we put our bid in and and we were accepted our bid was accepted and, and we purchased it uh, from distance without even going actually seeing the house we saw all we saw was the pictures that was on the listing and um, the realtor told us also uh, you realize there is some work involved here in this house and we said yeah we can see you know there's some pipe works there and some probably electric work and we were just thinking in ourselves 
that uh, well electric wise I can do that myself and the pipes maybe I can do some of them maybe we can just get somebody to do them you know we can make it livable there are um, it is it's a it's a brick house and uh, it's brick and mortar you know it's money it's investment at the end of the day and so we bought it and uh, we traveled from uh, Idaho uh, to Georgia to Atlanta Georgia and it took us three days uh, 37 hours on the road uh, straight and we stayed on you know different hotels and motels on the way for three nights and then we got there when we got there now we're completely shattered uh, hungry I've got a massive headache and so we stopped somewhere we uh, oh no we go no, straight we, straight we to go the house straight to the house to we get the deed and the documents from the realtor first and then we get the we get to the to the location and uh, we find out that the house is a shell so the house is nice on the outside the brickwork as everything is, is fine but inside there is no piping whatsoever everything is the cables have all been ripped for their copper value and probably sold off by who knows what. And we found out that there was a drug dealer next door to us too. Yeah, so we found out, uh, it didn't take us long, but we found out we were in a uh, ghetto of uh, black criminals. Yeah, <laughs> this was a black community area and we didn't realize that and and we were looked at like just like total outsiders just because of the color of our skin and um my husband or i we don't even see color when we look at people you know but we were getting like stares and glares and stuff it was very scary yeah we, we are colorblind but anyway yeah. not not lit in a literal sense but anyway uh we got to that house and <clears throat> i thought well we can't stay here uh, we have to go to a motel or hotel or a long stay place to stay uh, you know and uh, we didn't know any anywhere we didn't know the location didn't know the area so i walked around there and found this big guy and you know and and, and when i say all these guys every everybody that we came across they were all black and no offense, we, we don't mean, I, I have nothing against black people. It's just like, we just want to put you in a picture. So you- Kind of how out of place you, we were. You, I want you to feel what you would do. What would you do in, in our place? And uh, this guy, uh, he had lots of other guys working for him on a house that was like almost opposite to us, just a bit uh, further away around the corner. And um, I said, do you know any hotel around here? And he was just shocked. And it was just, hotel? Hotel around here? And, and he came and he said, what are you doing here? <laughs> I said, I've got a house here. And he said, um, you're a contractor? He, because he was a contractor himself. And he had workers working for him, basically renovating houses, flipping houses, and you know, selling them, renting them out. Uh, in the end, you know, eventually we found out he had 20, 20 odd, yeah, twenty odd properties. He was renting them out, and he was just going around. That was his job, going around collecting money and um, buying more houses and flipping them or, or renting them. He said he came and he looked at the house. He said, "This is not a place to live uh, to raise a family for you. You can't, you can't live here." Uh, so we you know asked why and all that we got to the point of it we just thought this is not our place but we have to we have to do uh, you know you do or die you can't yeah <laughs> we we, all of our money was in there we had we yeah, had we, only a little bit just to barely live on so we had no other option except no to other, live there no other choice so um he said he would help us uh, get that flat one side sorted so it's livable and um, he gave us a price uh, and, and to be honest I think he gave us a decent you know reasonable price it was he, he said three thousand dollar then and with three thousand dollar he did the wiring he did the plumbing uh, for one side of the flat and uh, some plaster plaster work 
because there was holes in the walls, you know, that punched. And where they had ripped all the yeah. wires out of the whole um, and, and the ceilings, duplex, so there, there was yeah. no ceiling, in fact. But it, none of these were shown in the pictures. We just thought, well, you know, there's some work, minor work, or, or even, you know, the whole wiring, if it needs done, I, I can do that, but uh, not building the whole inside of the house. So uh, we agreed, and uh, without writing any contract or anything, he started working he took us to a place to stay he showed us he helped us really to be honest and uh, he showed us a place to stay long term and um, it didn't take him long it, it, it was um, I think it was about two weeks yeah it was two weeks two weeks or so that they got everything sorted on one side so we could actually move from our uh, uh, hotel to, to that place and um, then I thought I would do the rest myself, you know, in my own pace. Uh, and we started buying stuff that we needed, like, you know, water, heater, boiler, and those kind of things to, you know, cooker to start building the, the other side. And then uh, and this guy was coming and going and his workers also were coming and going and selling things, to, trying to sell things to us and the things that we didn't even have money for. He, one day, on one occasion, he just came and dropped two uh, aircon systems there, and he said it would be how much? I think it was eight hundred or was it thousand five hundred? Yeah, something like that. Thousand five hundred. But whatever it was, we didn't even have money to to pay that because you know uh, we were counting on every penny. Yeah, and he did, he didn't believe that we didn't have money in our bank. He just thought we, we must have money. We were saying like, no, actually, we honestly, truly don't have anything. We we need to eat dinner this month. So we we made do in the end, and um, we finished off uh, both sides. Um, some of their some of his workers came and did some plaster work, but I can't because I can't even do plaster work. Um, I would do a. If I did that, it would be a dog's meal. Uh, so uh, they did some work there uh, and we paid them. And uh, in the meantime, uh, we were frightened uh, living in that environment. Uh, they were shooting uh, almost every night uh, as we were going to bed and our windows didn't have security bars. Um, I went and bought some bars for the doors you know, security bars for the doors and, and I installed them myself and did uh, other things to, to make it as secure as possible. We went uh, to the local police station and uh, asked the police uh, what we could do to keep ourselves more, you know, more safe. And this... Um, and, and by the way, I have to say that some there was complete strangers coming to our house and knocking on our bedroom windows at like four in the morning or seven in the morning because we found out later that our house also used to be a druggy house, but it hadn't been for a few months. But these people were still like popping up and, and when they saw us popping our head at the window, they like got a shock. <laughs> So they were shocked and anyway we we could see people were going and coming and there was actually a footpath into the back of our property like from other properties so it was like there was no security at all people were just coming and going in our property as they pleased it was it wasn't good so we we had to stop them and and we had to actually tell them you know not to go there and but we stopped some of them. Uh, in the end, we thought this is not the place to stay. We went to the police station uh, asking them what we could do to make ourselves more safe, if you like, or secure. And um, the, the, the police lady that was there, she was looking at me and talking to me like she was, <laughs> I was the, I was the suspect, you know, uh, what, you know, I, I have to tell you, you might be from Atlanta. Uh, this was in Cordova Street, and and this is in the heart of Atlanta, and uh, and so I said uh, we bought a house in Cordova Street, and what we sh what should we do? What do you suggest? And she just went like, well, you know, what made you buy a house in Cordova Street? You know, something like that. Anyway, even <laughs> she was shocked. <laughs> So I said, well, I didn't know it was Cordova Street any different to other, other streets. You know, we bought a house because we could afford it and we bought it. 
and and she just went like well you better get yourself some big guns and some vicious dogs and i thought well so that's a comforting <laughs> that's all the advice she was giving us advice yeah so uh, i came back and she was in the car i said well uh, i've got a comforting advice we have to get big dogs and vicious vicious dogs and big guns uh, not that we did we did it no we didn't uh, we, we were we, really we uh, didn't own any weapon we didn't even have i was joking with her i was saying well, we don't even have a sharp enough knife to cut cheese <laughs> yeah that's right so uh, we were walking there and uh, we were scared and uh, sometimes at least uh, when we were going shopping leaving the house and and the house was now done livable we were scared that same thing would happen again and uh, we would be you know homeless uh, what would we do so uh, we were just opening the, the door the security and i was sending her uh, i was first opening the car door and say you go in the car and then i open the door you go in and then lock the door till i lock the, the house door lock the car door till i lock the, car, the house door and then i was locking and i was jumping in putting my foot on the, uh, the, 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 the accelerator or gas and uh, run to stores to do our shopping and come back in uh, the same way. Uh, you, I was staying in the car, you go open the door first, get in, lock the door. <laughs> so you know, then I was locking the car and then I was coming back and coming in. So it was like we wouldn't leave any gaps for any, um, any intruder to come in. But anyway, we lived there. Uh, we had lots of uh, adventures. We, we saw a lot of things that I, I, our eyes hadn't seen ever before, and and some of them are funny, some of them are you know sad, some of them are scary. But um, um, we lived there, and nothing ever happened to us. Uh, I walked down that road many times. Um, with your t-shirt and jeans on just down the road uh, yeah, no we, weapon no vicious dogs we and, were we were 100 percent reliant on god's protection yeah and, and those people uh, who were living in those houses around there and uh, some of them sat on the porch of their houses you know it was summer uh, well it wasn't it summer. summer it was winter yeah it was, it was just winter really but warm. for us it was so warm and, yeah. and everybody was wearing their you know overalls and you know uh, overcoats and jackets and coats and stuff and I was just walking uh, with a t-shirt because the weather was so like familiar Wild. it was yeah. it was so much like the the spring maybe or, or beginning of summer here in the UK at least where we are yeah. and so uh, and, and that was another shocking thing for them they were just thinking where is your coat you don't have a coat <laughs> and but um, they were sat there watching me uh, walking back and forth and they were shocked and they were thinking you know maybe I'm I'm the head of gangsters and <laughs> I don't need any <laughs> I don't need any weapons <laughs> so anyway um, uh, we, we lived there in that state uh, for seven months and we renovated the house we put the house up for sale after it was finished and um, I remember now we have a return ticket and the return ticket was when we flew to America in 2011 the, the return ticket was for another year um, so th that was the that's as long as we could have it you know for the return the, f the furthest we could have uh, to get the, to the return tickets then um, now we have basically pressure from that side that we have to get back and use this ticket or we will end up having to buy another uh, pair of tickets uh, to, to come back home here we put the house up for sale and um, we had a realtor didn't even know how to take pictures the, the picture of the the bathroom instead of showing the bathroom was showing the whole of the sink and and it was like ridiculous anyway in the end um, we weren't getting many bites but uh, we got some somebody coming and there were there were a lot of people coming they, they were flippers they wanted to buy it for, for nothing, nothing for nothing and then basically flip it and make money but we we could tell 
uh, one person, one genuine person came who was genuinely a buyer who wanted to live there and uh, he sent the surveyor to survey to find out all the problems and, and I knew obviously this is their job, this is what they do. So he came and made a big list of all the problems and this guy you know, was kind of despaired. And he, he wanted the house but he didn't want it you know, for all those problems. I said, look, this guy, this is his job. This is his job. He lives by that. To, his job is to make the list as lengthy as possible. Because otherwise you just say, why do I pay you for two lines of a letter? So uh, cut the long story short, uh, we sold the house to this guy uh, below the market price, um, above what we had bought, but we didn't make money. If you, if you consider all the money we poured into the house and we you know, lived in there and all that, uh, it's not like we made money. We didn't make any money, but we uh, didn't lose either. It was almost, you could say, even. We got even. Uh, and we got out of there, we went, we drove back to Idaho because our ticket was from there. Oh yeah, that's the important thing I yeah. just missed. So <laughs> uh, when we got to the solicited lawyers, you call solicitors? Yeah, right? yes. lawyers. The lawyers, solicitors. Um, they found out that there is a lien, a water lien attached to the property. Uh, we didn't even have a clue what that Meant. And there was no lien when we bought it, so we didn't know why this lien had appeared. Yeah, suddenly appeared, and they said, "This is how much was it? Six thousand dollars. Six thousand. Six thousand dollars. Um, we are rounding things. So we don't know exactly. It's about six thousand dollars lien attached to the house that we had to pay. Now we don't even have that much money to pay. Uh, we were almost down to our last, last pennies. pennies. Yeah." Uh, and so and we couldn't sell the property unless yeah. the lien was paid first yeah you they could, you refused to sell the property and we we didn't know yeah they, they wouldn't do that they wouldn't say okay take some of the money of the sale and put it on towards that they, they wouldn't do that uh, so what we did uh, I, I'm not trying to promote uh, any church or any pastor or any anybody and um, I've said this before in my other videos I don't uh, ever uh, promote uh, approve of or disprove of any uh, speaker any church any news channel any um, preacher or any, any any prophet or anybody else anybody or in general if I have a, a personal conviction about something that is down to me I don't want um, impose that onto anybody else that's your business so this was happening this was supposed to have sold on was it thursday or friday mm -hmm. uh, and it didn't go through because friday we were thinking is is sold it's finished today we have to go to the solicitors get the money they get the deeds and everything is is transferred but they phoned us and they said we can't do this uh, because you have this much lien attached to it, you have to pay that. And uh, so now this is Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Uh, Monday is the last day that we can actually. What was it? The Monday that we can. Yeah, we had to leave on Monday to quick get back to Idaho to catch our plane to the UK. I think it was we had to actually leave on Monday or Tuesday or Tuesday, uh, Tuesday. Monday or Tuesday so we, 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 we calculated mess about. we ca calculated that the return ticket the date of the return ticket uh, if we were one day late we would have not caught that plane and we would have lost that ticket and, and we, we, we didn't have to money to buy, buy another, another one ticket. Uh, so uh, on Sunday um, uh, and during that seven months we were so busy renovating everything and we weren't attending any church to be frank uh, we were scared of leaving the house empty going to uh, attending any church uh, on this Sunday and uh, this last Sunday I was there or we were there uh, we got up and and I said to Stacy Stacy we have to today we have to go to the church of um, Creflo Dollar Mm -hmm. What's it called? Um, World 
changes. World changes. And, yeah, and, sure. and, and that is in Atlanta, for those of you who don't know. Yeah. And so um, she said, what about the house? I said, well, we have to, we have to believe God and we have to fa have faith and leave it. We can't, we can't do this. We have to go to a church. Um, again, it was like a force uh, within me telling me, you have to go there and it was that church. So we went there. Um, we got the address, we went there, and uh, obviously there's a massive uh, number of people there. They, uh, there were uh, ushers who guided us through uh, the, the, the ground floor where, you know, the preacher speaks and, you know, the main part of the, the, the main mm -hmm. part of the church. And almost to the uh, front row, so it was a third row, maybe third or fourth yeah, row. Yeah, third or fourth row. Who were nearly yeah. in the front of this church that has, I don't know, how many hundreds of rows of. And, and they have the balconies, the top. Ba yeah, you know, huge, so, huge church. Uh, that was the first and the last time so far that we've attended a mega church like that anyway. And um, we sat there, and they had communion at that on that day, and they they don't do that every week. They normally don't do that, and and also they don't normally pray at the end for people. Um, I think I, we that was our understanding anyway. Maybe they do, or maybe they did. But uh, our understanding was they didn't do that every week. Um, at the end of the sermon or the message. Um, they asked anybody who wants prayer, come forth, and we, of course, we went forward. forward. And um, people were going in and getting prayed on and moving out, and, and you know, very fast. And so we got there waiting for somebody to call us, and this um, very tall guy called us forward, and we went for him to, to tell us, you know, to, to pray for us. and. Uh, and I was thinking, how do I tell him uh, this problem that we have in a few seconds? Because it was like a few seconds, people were going in, asking for prayer, getting the prayers and moving. And uh, I thought, I have to do it. And, and so I quickly explained that we, we are selling the house. We have to get out of here. We have tickets to catch, uh, planes to catch. and. Uh, we don't live here, we have planes from Idaho, uh, so uh, we have to pay this amount of lien and we don't have that much money to pay. Uh, this guy said, we'll pray for you. Uh, the mayor of uh, Atlanta, actually. His secretary. His secretary actually comes and attends this church. Yeah, and um, she's a Christian attending this church. Yeah, yeah. And, and if you go, if your work is not sorted, uh, we'll ask them to sort it, to do something. Uh, because it wasn't our fault. The, the, the water had obviously gone under the uh, house and we could see it was flooded the, down the, on the, you know, basement. It was flooded. And, um, and that was probably during the time of transfer or just before that. Yeah, we, we don't found know. out people when they ripped everything, they ripped the pipes out, they just let the water keep going. They, they never shut any water off when these thieves came in originally to the house that we bought. So probably the water was running full on for a week or something. Yeah, the, these are all speculations, we don't know. Yeah. Uh, all we know, we, we had that much uh, lien attached to it and we had to pay. We went there uh, to the to the company that we had to pay the water bills and um, on that Monday uh, and we don't know uh, what happened, who talked to who or if anybody talked to anybody and um, we went to see if we could see the, per the person or persons that uh, they were directing us to are, is there. Uh, so we can talk to them and then uh, we found that person I went there and I explained again the situation and and this woman looked at the the, the bills and the water you know, history and all that and, and she said um, 
and wait outside and I'll get back to you. And I waited outside. After a few minutes, she came back and she said, oh, she sent somebody else actually. Uh, this guy came and he said, um, you have to pay, how much was it? $68. $67, $68. And uh, I said, is that all? And, and he said, yeah, and, and that's it, you, you're clear. I said, um, where can I pay that? <laughs> it wait, was just like wait, quick where, before yeah, you he, change your he mind. Basically, he cleared it. Yeah, so it was cleared. And we, to this day, we don't know we how. We don't know how or who uh, talked to him, we, yeah. and we never actually found out. Yeah, because uh, the, the agreement between us and the, the guy in the church was if you, get, if you run into troubles, call me. But uh, uh, I, I did call him because I couldn't find that person even. I couldn't even find that person, but I didn't call him to say, well, we are, you know, they're not sorting the problem, or well, the problem is not sorted, still we have to pay. And, and it was all cleared. Uh, so that was a, a miracle. miracle. And a miracle after miracle, and we, uh, the same day, we went to the uh, lawyer's office and we did the transfer, uh, and everything got transferred, finished, and we moved. If we didn't do that that day, we wouldn't have caught the, uh, the plane. And we got back. There is more to uh, this story and there is more like episodes of the following years. Uh, before we got back uh, to England for permanent, um, because in the meantime, uh, now because we had gone out of the UK, for a long time and at the time in 2011 before we went to America we had applied for Stacy's UK citizenship um, on the basis of marriage uh, and it was in the process and the, at the time it was only for three years if you're married for three years and you prove you're staying in the country for three years then you can get your citizenship but because we went out of the country and we stayed there for too long, uh, longer than like a visit, like three months, two months, then that application basically got reset. So she lost that citizenship. Now, what that meant was that we had to actually be in America back again and stay there until we get her citizenship or apply for apply her. Apply to apply get her, a permit to come in. Yeah, for her visa. Yeah. For her, like a permanent visa, it's, it's similar to green card, but they don't call it green card, they so just say uh, visa, permanent visa, or on the basis of marriage. And so we had to do that, and so we had to go back. This is only part of the longer story, uh, three years, three years uh, of our life in, in America. This was only one year of it. And so there is more, um, I, I don't want to explore all that in this video uh, maybe in the future we we go through all that if people are interested but at the moment it's already already running into an hour now talk and um, it will be beyond people's patience or time this day these days um, to talk about everything uh, we got back in the end and we are here uh, now we are in a similar situation um, we um, feel like God wants us to move from where we are uh, and we have had this kind of uh, it's not a feeling if you like if it, it, it kind of um, we've been compelled if you like to to move for a while and uh, we put our house for sale this house uh, by the way we have a big mortgage on it so uh, that's part of the reasoning behind it because we want to clear that we don't want to have any death yeah and so um, uh, we put it off for sale uh, just before the market the, the housing market slowed down and, and those of you who know it's global now again similar it's not recession yet but I think there will be and uh, the housing market has at least slowed down it hasn't crashed uh, it will probably crash at one point not probably tomorrow but uh, at one point soon not too not too early hopefully 
so we will actually finish the sale of this property. This house now, um, uh, after we put it off for sale, which um, was, in, uh, which was May. May 2022. May, we, we, we changed the uh, realtor or estate agent uh, once because they weren't doing much. And, and the houses were flying off the market and ours were Yeah, we kept seeing all these signs, sold within a week, sold within a week. Everywhere we drive, houses are being sold within a week and they're flying off and ours is just not even doing anything. Yeah. No one's even coming to Bear visit Bear in it. mind our house is a little bit of a, a unique house in the street. It is a detached property and it's rather big compared to the other houses. And the houses that were flying off the market were by in large, they were smaller houses and, and there were terrace ones so anyway uh, we changed the, the the estate agent and we put it on a different one they didn't do much either and then we had to actually put it on uh, auction on this from the same through the same estate agent or, or realtor and um, that means um, we had to put the price that the starting price obviously very low and we did that and um, we have now sold it subject to contract and we're just waiting for the solicitors to move to get moving but we've done our part and I've, I've uploaded all the forms and you know filled all the forms and documents yeah and, and now we are in a situation we don't exactly know where we're going uh, just as in 2011 we don't we didn't know where we would go where we were going what we wanted to achieve there and what was the aim of that and we were just reasoning it for ourselves justifying maybe it's because we want to get maybe God wants us to get near the family maybe God wants to test us or the or her family and, and all that also happened um, by the way but uh, there's more than that uh, I'm trying to cut the long story short. Now we are in this situation, and um, what do you want to say? To yeah, I just want to say that um, our house wasn't selling. It wasn't selling. We actually decided to take it off the market for the winter because oh, yeah. houses don't sell well in the winter. So we were. My husband actually picked up the phone to call the the guy, and he called him, and he said, "Oh." By the way, I have an offer for you. I, do you really want to take it off? I have an offer for you to buy your house from this person. Yeah. So the day that we were going to call and say, let's just leave it till next spring and put it on again next spring, um, yeah, we, 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 we got an offer. We weren't happy with the offer to begin with. We, we went back and forth a little bit and then we changed, they changed the price, the offer, and, and we agreed in the end. We kind of um, bit the bullet, if you like, yeah. and just as I did or I, we did in with 2011 the, with the Atlanta um, house yes. yeah and so uh, we are doing the same similar thing and uh, moving walking by faith and uh, the Bible says uh, the righteous shall walk by faith in uh, second Corinthians uh, which chapter is it it's second um, Corinthians mm -hmm. Romans uh, first uh, s verse 17 says uh, the righteous shall live by faith and also uh, 2 Corinthians 5 7 says the same thing the righteous shall live or shall walk by faith and uh, so you have to always think you're walking by faith not by sight if, if there is that nudge within you, within your gut, the gut feeling that you have, and it keeps coming back to you, and it's not against the will of God, the word of God, then it's most likely from God, and you just have to do what what you have to do. And I just want to say we don't we don't know where we're going yet. We don't know even which side of the country yeah. we don't know whether to go to the u.s or whether to stay here we are absolutely open to where god wants us and we really feel like abraham like we're stepping out and one step of the way god is showing us what to do well, we've done that a few times in our life and and like i said that was only one year of the three years and we've moved by faith uh, many times and walked out by faith just like abraham without knowing where we were going or what we were going to do 
and it is stressful I have to say it's not like you know we're not trying to pretend it's so easy it is difficult it is stressful and, and because you want to be in control but ultimately God is in control and you have to understand that and so uh, we have all the cards on the table all the options we have written it in on a big uh, A3 paper if we do this we might do that if we do this you know. so we have our own options and we're trying to explore different ways different avenues you know what we can do we're open to go uh, outside the country we are open to you know stay here and uh, we want to be in God's best place and have God's best and I want you to be the same and want and desire God's best and uh, be flexible we are not now the same as we were in 2011 when we were just two of us we have now two kids uh, to to think of and to consider but we're homeschooling our children so that gives us more freedom and we have the the the, the, the freedom of our mentality if you like the, the, that we think outside boxes we don't think inside the box we think outside the box we just think when God whatever God wants is best we might not think that way but it, it's, it definitely is always the best yes. I hope you enjoyed this message it's now just over one hour message and um, and I hope you tell me in your comments uh, what you feel uh, or what your suggestions are if you have any and uh, let us know and as I said we read all the comments we might not answer we might not be able to because of the number of comments or we might be able to but we might not have the time to do it and, and so forgive us if you don't answer or respond but if you have a serious message or a personal uh, message you want to you tell us please go to our website jesusministries.co.uk and send us an email uh, we are more than happy to hear from you and also I'd like to say you guys everybody has their own stories of how God has been faithful and your own work uh, journeys please share them with each other we're here to build each other up and encourage each other in the Lord thank you very much for watching and your time Till next time and another video, God bless and goodbye. God bless you.